point I, I was going to need a, a transplant, a kidney transplant. And in July of 1986, when I was 12 years old, um, that's, that was the time that I um, started dialysis. And then exactly a month later, um, I received a kidney transplant in August of 1996. Um, so, so far I've been 23 years post-transplant and I'm currently um, between stage three and stage four of kidney disease. And then um, now I wanna talk about a little bit about how I did to prepare for being in this um, shelter in place. Um, the first thing I did was make sure that I had plenty of medication on hand. Um, as a post-transplant, I depend on um, immunosuppressants to keep my transplant going um, for my body not to be uh, strong enough to fight this, this kidney that is not origin originally mine. Um, so what I did, I called my pharmacy, my um, different pharmacies because that's, um, I use different pharmacies to get my medication. So I called, spoke to the pharmacists, um, so the pharmacist can override for extra medication. I wanted to make sure I had one to two, three months um, additional medication on hand, just in case, um, because things are so uncertain right now, just in case it, uh, you know, the pharmacies has to shut down for whatever reason. So I just wanted to make sure I had plenty of medication to keep me going for the next three months. And then the next thing I did, was contact my doctor. I had a few doctor appointments scheduled for the month of March and April, and I contacted my doctor to make sure that, you know, if it was safe for me to come in, or what were my what were my alternatives. Luckily, um, my doctor said, you know what, you don't have to come in right now. Um, we only want to see patients that are, um, you know, that have symptoms or things like that, we can reschedule your appointments. So my appointments have been rescheduled. Uh, but again, having that um, contact with my doctor, making sure that I keep constant communication with, with my doctors to make sure that um, my kidney still, my transplant is still functioning. Uh, and then after that, um, I for me has been important to keep a routine. Um, I used uh, the, the time blocking method uh, to keep me on track of things that I need to do throughout the day. So I've been working from home for, this is the fourth week, so about a month. And the first week was um, very stressful for me. I didn't plan my day. I was watching the news the entire time. And I was just panicking with a lot of anxiety. But then I decided to not watch the news anymore. Uh, just, you know, keep, stay updated, but not obsessively watch the news. And then I also um, wanted to keep a routine. So I created a schedule for myself to stay on track. Um, so my schedule kind of looks like this. Um, waking up and then going for a walk with my husband. And then after that, like around 7.30, shower, eat breakfast, get ready, and get ready for the day. Um, 8.30, start work. And throughout my day, um, I listen to positive podcasts um, to just stay positive. And then I take a break around 10.15, and then um, continue working from 10.30 to about one o'clock, one to 2 p.m. I take lunch. And um, from two to five, I continue working and I end my, my work day at 5 p.m. From five to six, I cook dinner and um, I have dinner with my family. From six to 9 p.m., I usually do homework, watch a movie, um, watch funny YouTube videos, I bake or I craft. Um, I usually, I like um, decorating my planner or doing some crafting. Um, and then around nine or 10 p.m. I go to sleep. And then um, other things that I have done is uh, making sure that I do some self-care. 
um, I love to cook and bake. Prior to the self-isolation, um, I didn't have much time to do anything other than work and being stuck in traffic. Um, so I, I'm taking this as an opp opportunity to do some of the stuff that I really like doing, such as cooking, baking, um, crafting, watching some of my favorite movies um, and TV shows and relaxing. And um, the most important thing is for me to stay home, not go out other than just for the morning walk. Um, the morning walk, I try to do it at, at a time where I know there isn't a lot of people out. So um, I don't have to face that, um, I guess that issue of like coming into contact with somebody. Um, I'm lucky that my husband um, is able to go to the grocery store and shop for groceries, but I've also been using delivery um, delivery services so that neither me or my husband have to go out. And another thing that I do do um, is wash my hands often as recommended. I've been doing that for since I can remember. And, um, and also cleaning the surfaces, making sure that the surfaces have been sanitized every single day. And that's pretty much all I do. Excellent. Uh, thanks Thank so much. You. So many useful tips. And um, I'm so thrilled that you're using this time to really uh, learn something new, bake and enjoy yourself and avoid LA traffic. That could be quite yeah. difficult. I've um, been so many hours in, in my day. Yeah, thanks so much, Anel, for sharing uh, your tips and uh, something that you have learned through this experience. We'll be sharing your Instagram account. And if anyone has questions to Anel about her experiences being productive at home, you can reach out to her. Uh, thank you again. And I would like to invite you to our final speaker, again, Wilson Du, and with his experience and his approach to uh, self-care uh, during the home isolation or home retreat. So Wilson, share with us your insights and looking forward to get inspired. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a crazy time, but I mean, it's, it's not too different from uh, how life was before, but uh, just a little bit more, um, more careful. So life with COVID-19, um, I treat, I assume everybody's infected. So when I, when I see somebody or if, if, if I'm out, I, I avoid touching people. Uh, and I'm, I'm a hugger. I like to hug people. And now it's, it's a little bit different where I can't hug people. I like to shake their hands. I can't do that right now. But I wash my hands just like Anel does uh, religiously all the time, prior, after, any type of contact, going out, uh, any of that stuff. I wash my hands constantly, uh, hand sanitizers, all that stuff. I keep wipes and hand sanitizers in, in the car. So anytime I have to leave, um, if I go anywhere, it's, I'm wiping everything down before and afterwards. I'm hand sanitizing my I'm sanitizing my hands before and after I, I come in and out. I have gloves and masks with me at all times. So if I do go out, I'm, I'm wearing it. And um, every anytime I go out, whether it be to dialysis, to the clinic, to the pharmacy, getting some stuff, immediately when I come home, my shoes stay outside and I take all of my clothes and I throw them. I, I walk directly to the wash. I try not to contaminate anything and just uh, just wash everything that I, I have with me. If I have my phone, I'll sanitize it, my AirPods, things like that. So it's very important to, uh, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. And I, I just try to be cautious on that. That being said, what my daily life is, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit bittersweet. Uh, you know, my life before the shelter in place or before this lockdown, I was always surrounded by a lot of people and now it's it's more staying home. But pretty much my daily life, uh, days of dialysis, I go Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, uh, I'm gloving up, I'm, I'm, I have a mask, I go into dialysis, they check the temperatures prior to reaching up to the main floors. We're washing our hands prior to sitting down in the chair, washing our access uh, prior to uh, getting poked. Um, you know, alternatives to opening doors. I, I'm, I'm using my elbows a whole lot, or I'm using, uh, or, or you know, if I, if I'm using the glove, I'm, I'm removing it and putting on a new pair of gloves. I'm wiping down all the parts of the car before getting in and out. Um, again, clothes, 
after dialysis goes directly into the wash. And it's very important, like uh, Natalia said before, uh, removing the mask is, is, is definitely a process. It's uh, doing it carefully, hand sanitizing myself before I get in the car. I'll remove it without touching the surface of the mask and discarding it uh, into the biohazard bin at, at dialysis. Um, Non-dialysis days, uh, you know, uh, just like Elizabeth was saying earlier, it is a blessing to be able to work on a lot of things that we weren't able to work on before. Um, there's, I have a lot of hobbies that I always said, oh, if I had the time, I'll play guitar a little bit, I'll sing a little bit more. Um, right now I'm experimenting with different workouts. I, I do spend a lot of time at the gym currently. Uh, benefits of owning a gym is that uh, there's nobody there. And so I can go in there, I use the whole space to myself. Um, and so I, I, I do a lot of workouts. I'll try to get a lot of workouts on video so I can send it out uh, to other members as well. Um, and just, you know, again, follow all the same sanitary procedures of wiping everything down. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's being able to get caught up on a whole lot of things. Before the shelter in place, life seemed to be a, been moving so quickly, especially with uh, running a business and, and trying to get uh, uh, treatment and, and all that stuff. And now we're able to just take a step back, plan out things a little bit more. And uh, I know that when the shelter in place is, is all done, we'll be uh, back uh, better than ever. So that's, that's my life in a nutshell with living with COVID. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Wilson. Uh, even uh, in such a challenging time, I really appreciate how positive you are and you find all this uh, great projects uh, like playing on guitar, singing, and uh, just developing your skill set. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure everyone in our audience also have those dream uh, occupations we used to do or wanted to try and now we have time <laughs> for it. So in, in case, guys, you want to play guitar, you can reach out to Wilson, maybe Two of you can practice guitar. Oh, I'm not that great. Don't reach out to me for the guitar. <laughs> I'll give you a workout, not the guitar. <laughs> um, well, you know, it's such a pleasure with uh, all our panelists today to catch up on this conversation, to review the resources available, to go over some of them in high level, some of them going in depth. But certainly we haven't been able to really address every aspect of self-care in this webinar. However, we've been really good going over time and we just can keep talking and it's going to go to the second, third hour. However, we still have a couple questions that have been asked by attendees of today's webinar and I would like to ask our panelists to answer those questions. Uh, so, hope everyone ready. I have a first question to Mathia. Oh, sorry, one of our attendees asked a question about the meal de delivery services to use. Um, specifically a Freshly or any other meal delivery services if you could recommend or maybe some tips when someone deciding to use meal delivery services in terms of nutrition for renal patients or maybe also any other precautions. Well, Freshly, I believe the food's already made when you get it. So it's almost like getting um, fresh made TV dinners. Um, and although I think they're good, I think they're probably a little higher in sodium than you'd want. But a lot of the ones that come to you where you do all the prep work and it's just a recipe, if you can manage those where you are getting, um, you know, three to four ounces of protein with that meal and you're not using um, like sauces that are pre-made, but you're able to manage the sodium in there, then I think they're fine. Um, one of the things that I like to do, um, and I can share with Natalia to email out after, is there's a website uh, by the USDA where you can look up foods and look up the different nutritional values. And um, so sometimes there's food in there that you don't know much about. So you can either look it up or um, review or go to this website and try to find it. Um, but I, I think they're fine and I think it's great to develop some skills and I've found that after a few rounds of getting the food, um, it can be a little expensive. So you can learn some new techniques, you can learn ways that they do different things and then you can um, use those going forward but make your own um, meals. And, and like I said, if you look at some of the common recipes that you use or some of the common foods that you eat, sometimes you can see the pattern and create that, just use a little different food. Um, you know, different meat, different vegetable, that type of thing. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mathia. 
Uh, just one more thing to add, uh, just since it's uh, COVID-19, make sure you disinfect uh, the meals that uh, brought in box, and maybe with the disinfection wipes, or uh, the second question I have um, to Shahid um, as a scientist, um, is, there, is it prohibited to have pets like dogs or when you have CKD? At present, or at least in, in, in media and in reports, um, there hasn't been any um, robust or um, substantial evidence to highlight that um, uh, animals um, are you know, more probable to get infected with COVID-19. Um, and as um, you know, research is you know, getting evidenced you know, uh, quite routinely and they're looking, you know, scientists and medics and clinics um, and you know, researchers around the world are looking at this from various perspectives. But um, to answer it you know, uh, specifically right now, um, there isn't um, any specific evidence to say that you know, uh, anyone with pets um, whether it be dogs um, or a cat or any other, you know, uh, animal um, is is likely to be more at higher risk of getting uh, COVID-19. Um, but what what is important, and I think it's it's a message that has been sort of um, highlighted throughout this webinar and you know in in reports is it's absolutely vital wherever. Uh, anyone has any pets um, of any kind it's about keeping them them clean and keeping yourself sanitized as well so it reduces the uh, risk and probability of actually um, having any sort of you know um, dirt or you know um, uh, you know um, uh, microorganisms that could affect um, you know your, your general well-being and your immune system so it is all about keeping clean and sanitized but yeah again just to highlight that there isn't any specific evidence to say that uh, anyone with pets is at higher risk at the moment excellent uh, so I have another question Shahid towards you and um, okay. uh, you just let me know if you can um, address it uh, if you catch COVID, would you stop your immune suppressants? Uh, no. <laughs> Simple answer. If you've been prescribed, um, you know, life, um, you know, long immunosuppression for, you know, your solid organ transplant, then, and, you know, this is prescribed from, you know, your renal team or whoever um, is looking after your health on that side of things. Um, you are not to uh, stop any of your medication, immunosuppression or otherwise, unless um, you know it, it, it has been said by you know uh, your you know uh, renal clinicians or the, the renal team. So um, no would be the answer to that. Excellent. Thanks so much for your feedback. Uh, so I have another question. I think it will be Elizabeth can answer it, but also I'm sure that uh, some of our Patients, advocates also can answer it. How can I deal with anxiety and loneliness? Join the warrior class. <laughs> That's a good. One. That's perfect. So. Um, I would say trying out the practices um, that that um, were shared that I shared, um, seeing if that helps, and also I think um, realizing that it's okay. Like there's a lot of fear and anxiety in the world right now. And realizing that, you know, everybody is not different degrees, but everybody's feeling it. And sometimes just even realizing that brings me comfort. Um, everyone in the world's going through this together. And then what can we do? What, like you have the power within yourself. Everyone does. Everyone has a power within themselves to pull themselves out of that moment that moment of fear that gripping fear and so it's just recognizing that and tapping into it tapping into your own ability to pull yourself out and you know maybe slowing down your breath just putting your hand over your heart slowing down your breath calling a friend you know if you're in a moment of fear call someone and say help me it's it's perfectly it's a it's a sign of strength to tell someone you need help so call someone or someone that you're living with, say, I'm fearful right now, help me, and just start talking. And 
in your, or the other thing that's really powerful is thinking of what you're grateful for. So I'm, oh, one other thing really quickly is, which I just remembered, which is very powerful, is saying to yourself, even though I don't like how I'm feeling right now, can I realize that I'm okay in this moment? Like in this very moment, I am okay. Regardless of the anxiety and the fear thought that you're having, in the moment, in the present moment, you're okay. And then when you say that a few times, it calms your body down and then call a friend or um, uh, do something, it's, it's, think of things you're grateful for or you know, turn on a heartwarming movie to get your mind off it. So anything you can do to change focus to see more. I hope that is helpful. Yes, yes, it's uh, very helpful. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And uh, Mathia, we have another question. Uh, so Stephen, he has a question about what type of bread to have to avoid salt. Um, you can make your own bread and use a little less salt. Uh, but typically, if you just read the label, um, you're, it's gonna be easier to compare the breads at the counter. Um, a lot of breads are gonna be uh, higher in sodium. So if you can, do some of your own homemade bread. Bread needs a little bit of salt to um, actually do the reaction that it does to rise and stuff like that, but it doesn't need probably as much as the recipe says, so you may want to test that a little bit. I, I think it's very calming to knead bread, so, but that maybe is just me, but I, I think it's a very calming um, practice. Uh, so that would be my advice. Just compare your labels, look for serving sizes. Um, sometimes it may say two slices, sometimes it may say one slice, um, but that would be my recommendation. The last question I want to address that seems so uh, to be very often uh, asked, it's about how can I stay safe on dialysis? And a lot of patients who are still attend dialysis treatments, they're really concerned about the safety uh, to having that additional exposure. And um, I would like Wilson to help me to answer this question. Yeah, um, you know, uh, uh, is, is that uh, as a patient, as a dialysis patient, we all have to be proactive and, and be, be responsible ourselves. Don't rely on the dialysis clinic to, 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 to make sure that you're safe. Don't, don't rely on the dialysis clinic and the nurses and the techs to make sure that they're sanitized. You have to take it upon yourself to make sure that you're sanitized. Make sure that, uh, make sure that you're cleaning up. You're make sure that you're using gloves. You're paying attention to the techs and the nurses coming by your chair to make sure that they've changed their gloves. Make sure that they're using hand sanitizer, things like that. Uh, but uh, that being said, uh, again, if you can get, get yourselves uh, some PPE as well. Get some gloves, get some masks, uh, because uh, again, once you go into a contaminated area, if you're using a mask, you're not able to reuse that mask. So make sure you have plenty. Um, again, my procedure going into uh, dialysis is, um, when I get into the car before driving out, I'm, I'm, I'm using hand sanitizers. And, I, and then right after I use hand sanitizers, I'll have some gloves. As I go through uh, into dialysis, I, I watch what type of surfaces I touch. Um, especially when I walk into the door of dialysis, I have to hold the door handle to push it in. I'm wearing gloves and at that time, I have another pair of gloves with me. So I'm removing the gloves and I'm putting on a new pair of gloves. And, how you, and also how you remove your gloves instead of just pulling it out and taking it off, if you remove it from the inside. That way you're not, uh, again, you assume that everything's contaminated. Uh, you, you're washing your access. When, even when you go to the scale to weigh in yourself beforehand, make sure you're not touching the surfaces if you can. Um, and then uh, uh, again, throughout dialysis, really it's, it's uncomfortable to, to lay there with the mask on, but, but I do keep it on. Sometimes it itches. Um, but uh, again, I always, always have some extra pair of gloves, masks in the car, and just wiping everything down. And after I leave, when I leave the dialysis clinic, Again, another pair of gloves comes off, get into the car, and the pair of gloves comes on. Uh, but before that, I, I will sanitize my hands, uh, put, on, put on a new mask, and just, again, everything, you just have to assume that everybody's contaminated, and you have to assume that you're contaminated, because, you know, it's, it's one thing for, for, for us as a patient to get, the, get COVID. It's, it's already scary enough. 
I mean, I think one of my biggest fears or, or bigger fears is actually infecting somebody else. And so since we're in a dialysis clinic with a lot of immunocompromised folks, um, you treat everybody as if they're infected and you treat as if you're, you are infected yourself. So before seeing a loved one, if you have to see a loved one, um, make sure that, that, that you're, you're protecting yourself for, for them. Make sure that when you go into the house that you completely disinfect everything, throwing your clothes in the wash. If you need to take a shower, I, I don't think I've showered so many times now. I've showered three, four times a day sometimes. Um, and just washing hands uh, all the time. And washing your hands just like in the diagram. Do it. Give it a thorough wash. I don't know if you, if any of you seen the video on uh, on social media of, of uh, somebody wearing a glove and they put some color pink to show you how yeah. you're not cleaning your yeah, hands completely. Yeah, so like glitter so, kind of style. Yeah, it's like glitter. So you you see how you need to cover all of your hands. And, you know, I have a habit. I like touching my face, which, you know, I shouldn't be doing, but I like to touch my face all the time. I already sanitized my hands three times during this webinar. But, um, yeah, just, again, treat, treat yourself as if you're infected so that you don't get anybody else infected treat everybody else around you at the, the clinic, the nurses, the techs, treat them as if they're infected and be proactive in, in, in just being observant of everything that you do, everything that you touch, even get to the point where, where you're observing the techs and the nurses that actually come to you. Awesome. Thanks so much about sharing all this uh, self-discipline and how to be thoughtful about it. I just know that uh, Shahid, you were kind of numbing and wanting to add something uh, from the scientific perspective. Would you have any additional feedback uh, to what Wilson said? Ultimately, you ha almost have to think that from a, it, it, when you when someone is on dialysis, their their blood is being purified or it's being cleansed. So you know all the toxins are being rid of you know, um, through, you know, dialysis treatment. So if one is to think of um, dialysis in that sense and how it purifies the bloods, you know, and replenishes, you know, and stores your, your red cell stores, um, then it's almost like that's done from the physiological perspective internally. And also it, it whilst it sort of messes the immune system a little bit it also actually makes the immune system a little bit more stronger because you've got to think that the good stuff is coming in the bad stuff is going out but as wilson absolutely rightly says um that all that um mechanism and that discipline is it's absolutely important from the exterior point of view the hand sanitizing the masks and all of the other things that's for your exterior self so just as, as someone who's dialyzing, you know, is keeping, it, it's all about purifying the inside um, in, in, a, in a sort of a traumatic way in some way, but also from an exterior point of view, the hands, you know, keeping clean on the outside is absolutely important. So the two sort of, I just wanted to hi highlight the two go hand in hand, if that makes sense. I guess. Thank you so much, Shahid. Appreciated your feedback. And again, guys, it's been two hours. It's been amazing. Yeah. We can keep going. Uh, we really made a circle of uh, great panelists, great people here. And um, what we're learning that, uh, um, you know, from today's conversations could be just in the beginning. And anyone who's attending this webinar, please submit your questions if you have any uh, to the email natalia at greenalmate.com. Natalia at Greenalmate renalmate.com. Again, if you want to re-engage with any speakers of today, uh, we'll make sure to follow up with the presentation, their contact information, and you can also reach out and ask for the introduction. To all our panelists, thank you so much for your time, for your um, work to prepare very insightful information, uh, but also for, you know, just being here in this challenging time, uh, to be a strong support for renal patients. And uh, I, your work is uh, highly appreciated. I'm so grateful to have this community around um, the world uh, to be able to provide this kind of collaborative efforts. And uh, all your tips were amazing. I'm going forward to bake today. <laughs> I need to exercise, I need to sleep well. All of this I'll be adapting on my own and hope you'll take some of this lesson also for your own self-care. 